get your King James Bible, the real Bible. Turn in your King James Bible to Jeremiah chapter 34. Jeremiah chapter 34. Jeremiah is my favorite book in all of Scripture. Jeremiah chapter 34. We're going to be doing some skipping around in this chapter, but check this out. Jeremiah chapter 34. Go in your King James Bible, the real Bible, and follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at. Okay? <coughs> First, Jeremiah chapter 34, verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay? Follow me along in the King James Bible, real Bible. Jeremiah 34, beginning with verses 1 on to verse 3. The word which came on to Jeremiah from the Lord, when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army, and all the kingdoms of the earth of his dominion, and all the people fought against Jerusalem and against all the cities thereof, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Go and speak to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and tell him, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And thou shalt not escape out of his hand, but shall surely be taken, and delivered into his hand. And thine eyes shall behold the eyes of the king of Babylon, and he shall speak with thee mouth to mouth, and thou shalt go to Babylon. Now, very quickly look back at verse 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, when Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and all his army, and all the kingdoms of the earth and of his dominion, and all the people fought against Jerusalem and against all the cities thereof, saying. So Nebuchadnezzar was going against Jerusalem, attacking it, besieging it, okay? Nebuchadnezzar was literally knocking on the door. And the Lord had warned children of Israel, that they were going to lose and go into captivity. Okay? Now skip down in Jeremiah 34 to verses 8, and we will be reading from verses 8 on to verse 17. Okay? Check this out. Now Jeremiah 34, verses 8, on to verse 17. This is the word that came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, after that the king Zedekiah had made a covenant with all the people which were at Jerusalem to, to proclaim liberty unto them, that every man should let his manservant and every man his maidservant being a Hebrew or a Hebrewess, go free, that none should serve himself of them, to wit, of a Jew his brother. Now that is in accordance to the law. Okay? That is definitely in accordance to the law, and uh, the references are Leviticus 25, verses 39 on to verse 46. Okay? And also in Nehemiah verse, uh, chapter 5, verses 8 on to 12. Okay? Those are references about how this is in accordance to the law, what they were doing, okay? To proclaim liberty to the, their servants who were Hebrews, okay? Verse 10. Now when all the princes and all the people which had entered into the covenant heard that everyone should let his manservant and everyone his maidservant go free, that none should serve themselves of them any more, then they obeyed and let them go. They, done, they did done something right, according to the law. Check this out. Verse 11. But! <laughs> but! Afterward, 
they turned and caused the servants and the handmaids whom they had let go free to return and brought them into subjection for servants and for handmaids. They changed their mind because there was no change in them. Verse 12. Therefore the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, I made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondmen, saying, At the end of seven years, let ye go every man his brother in Hebrew, which hath been sold unto thee. And when he hath served thee six years, thou shalt let him go free from thee. But your fathers hearken not unto me, neither incline their ear. And ye were now turned, and had done right in my sight, in proclaiming liberty every man to his neighbor. And ye had made a covenant before me in the house which is called by my name. But ye turned and polluted my name, and caused every man his servant, and every man his handmaid, whom ye had set at liberty at their pleasure to return, and brought them into subjection, to be unto you for servants and for handmaids. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Ye have not hearkened unto me, in proclaiming liberty every one to his brother, and every man to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim a liberty for you, saith the Lord, to the sword, to the pestilence, and to the famine. And I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. No change. There was no change. Impending doom was upon the children of Israel at this time. And they had actually done something right. But yet, they went back right away, virtually, and took their servants back to serve them. In the face of impending doom and destruction, they couldn't get over themselves. Isn't that interesting? Now, Jeremiah chapter 36. We will begin in Jeremiah chapter 36, verses 1 under verse 3 again, okay? Jeremiah chapter 36, verses 1 on to verse 3. And it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take thee a roll of a book, and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel, and against Judah, and against all the nations from the day I spake unto thee, from the days of Josiah even unto this day. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I propose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Now, Jeremiah uh, Baruch wrote in the book what Jeremiah dictated to him. Okay? And then Baruch took this book and read it in the um, in the house of the Lord. Go now to <clears throat> Jeremiah 36 verses 10 on to verse 12. Okay? If you want to read the context the entire chapter is on your own time like we did in Jeremiah 34 and 36, please feel free. But showing you something here. Jeremiah 36, verses 10 on to verse 12. Then read Baruch in the book, the words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord, in the chamber of Gamariah the son of Shaphan, the scribe, in the higher court, at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house, in the ears of all the people. 
When Micaiah the son of Gemariah the son of Shaphan had heard out of the book all the words of the Lord, then he went down into the king's house, into the scribe's chamber, and lo, all the princes sat there, even Elishama the scribe, and Dalaiah the son of Shemaiah, and Elnathan the son of Akabor, and Gemariah the son of Shaphan, and Zedekiah the son of Hananiah, and all the princes. He's like, oh, so this guy was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Now look at, now we're going to skip verse 13 and go to verses 14 on to verse 16. Okay? 14 on to verse 16. Okay? Ah, let's read verse 13 while we're at it, okay? Then Micaiah declared unto them all the words that he had heard, when Baruch read the book in the ears of the people. Therefore all the princes sent Jehudi, the son of Nathaniah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Cushai, unto Baruch, saying, Take in thine hand the roll wherein thou hast read in the ears of the people, and come. So Baruch, the son of Neriah, took the roll in his hand and came unto them. And they said unto him, Sit down now, and read in our ears. So Baruch read in their ears. Read it in their ears, excuse me. Now it came to pass, when they had heard all the words, they were afraid, both one and other, and said unto Baruch, We will surely tell the king all these words. Now skip to verse 20, and we will read verse 20. On to verse 26. Okay? Verse 20 on to verse 26. Follow me along, of course. And they went into the king, into the court. But they laid up the roll in the chamber of Elishama the scribe, and told all the words in the ears of the king. So the king sent Jehudi to fetch the roll, and he took it out of Elishama the scribe's chamber, and Jehudi read it in the ears of the king, and in the ears of all the princes which stood beside the king. Now remember, when these guys who brought this roll of the book to the king, when they heard it, they were all afraid. Okay? Now watch this. Now the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. And it came to pass that when Jehudi had read three or four leaves, he cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Yet they were not afraid, nor rent their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words. The ruler of the country, the king, heard some, cut it, threw it into the fire. They didn't care. They weren't afraid. Nevertheless, El Nathan and Delaiah and Gemariah had made intercession to the king that he would not burn the roll, but he would not hear them. But the king commanded Jeheramiel, the son of Hamelech, and Saraiah, the son of Azriel, and Shalamiah, the son of Abdeel, to take Baruch, the scribe, and Jeremiah the prophet. But the Lord hid them. So the king wanted to get Baruch and Jeremiah for the book that was read unto them. They didn't hear it. There was no fear. No fear of the Lord. No fear of the Lord and his word. Ezekiel, now. Chapter 34. Ezekiel 34. Oh, excuse me, beg your pardon, Ezekiel chapter 33. 
Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 30 on to verse 33. Ezekiel 33, verses 30 on to verse 33. Go there, of course. We read, Also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song, of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Second Timothy. Oh yeah. Familiar verses. Second Timothy chapter three. Verses 1, on to verse 7. No, you know what? Uh, verses 1, on to verse 9. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verses 1, on to verse 9. Familiar, very familiar verses on to you. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. They're here, aren't they? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. In the midst of impending doom and destruction, in the midst of the inevitable quickly approaching, catching away of the body of Christ, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, still wanting to maintain and cling to their petty little kingdoms and their wants, as before the Jesuits released all this po uh, propaganda and put forth the poison crown, the corona gonna get you virus. Before the Masonic orders being run by the Jesuits, implemented all this race, uh, race war stuff here in America. Boasters, proud. What does the Lord think about pride? <laughs> Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, not separate, not set apart. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers. <laughs> Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Hello, brother and sister. Traitors, heady, high minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but 
but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janes and Jambres which stood withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. <clears throat> but they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be, be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. Second Timothy four verses three and four. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned on to fables. Titus Chapter 3 Verses 8 on to verse 11. No. Titus chapter 2. Beg your pardon, brethren. First, Titus chapter 2. Sorry about that. Verses 11. On to verse 15, to close out the chapter. Titus chapter 2, verse 11, on to verse 15, to close out that chapter. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world this present world looking for that blessed hope catching away the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ <clears throat> who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort, and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Now, now, Titus chapter 3, verses 11, uh, verses 8, on to verse 11. Titus chapter 3, verses 8 on to verse 11. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions, and genealogies, and contentions, and strivings about the law. For they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition 
Reject. Bye 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 bye. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. You know, brethren, I don't know about you. There are occasionally, occasionally, that I have found in my personal witnessing outside my door. Every once in a rare while nowadays, you will find someone who is genuinely interested in truth. But witnessing this close to the catching away of the body of Christ is becoming far more difficult because people want teachers who will itch their ears and these these Christians who are associated with these church buildings who don't read or even believe in the real Bible, the King James Bible, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God for us, written in English, to be used, this to be used to be translated into other tongues, this, the King James Bible, the real Bible. It's getting far more difficult. You know, Monday, I went out about my town and just did a whole bunch of tracting, you know. If people got them, great. If not, whatever. Like I said, every once in a rare while, you will come across someone who is really sincerely interested in the truth. But brethren, we have to remember, <clears throat> the blessed hope is rapidly approaching. And you're seeing heretics coming out of the woodwork. Guys who hadn't been making videos for about two years, and then they come out making videos against the Romans Road and preaching against Romans 10. And you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, of the Church of the Living God, you, you know what they're disputing. And the enemies, the Jesuit coadjutors and the Jesuits themselves are issuing challenges to come to defend their beliefs with people who are lost and on their way to hell. It's a trap. <laughs> Want to trap you. Snare you. Don't fall for it, brethren. Don't fall for it. Okay? Just, just don't. Don't. You know, brethren, with these coadjutors and Jesuits themselves, um... You're wasting your time. You really are. You really are. They just want to debate, cause division, cause strife. That's all they want to do. Second Timothy 3 again. Verse 10. On to verse 17. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. And brethren, hello, hi, hi, the blessed hope. 
the catching away for the time of Jacob's trouble is coming very quickly. And the heretics are coming out of the woodwork. The coadjutors are getting bolder. The Jesuits know that this is their hour in the power of darkness. And those of you of the Church of the Living God who stand by this book, the King James Bible, the real Bible, we are to live in accordance to this book and to give these people who are going to be left behind a proper example. Verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Unless you're one of these modern Christians who compromise, who sell out, who have the mentality, the best way to get rid of your enemy is make him your friend. Don't discourage people from using other Bible translations. Don't just say, oh, oh yeah, I, I read the King James Bible. It's a good translation. Beware of these sellouts, brethren, who go by the name of Christian, but are loved of the world. And are a part of the world. Because those of you of the Church of the Living God, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Hi, you been there yet? <laughs> but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Hi, all you Jesuits, you scumbags, scoundrels, you coadjutors, infiltrators, trying to, still at this very day, trying to snare and trap the brethren. Verse 14, brethren, sisters, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Who's taught you? And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Jump down to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. On to verse 8. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Of an evangelist. Excuse me. Make full proof of thy ministry. Every single one of you. Who are truly saved. Born again of the church of the living God. Every single one of you. You might not make videos, you might not pass out tracts, you might not preach the scriptures outside your door. Every single one of you, in whatever capacity you are in, are in the ministry of reconciliation. Whether you like it or not. So make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. The time of our departure is at hand, brethren. Hey, 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 whoa, 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 time out, you. I'm not doing any breaker date settings or anything. I'm just saying. It's coming very quickly. Uh, 
I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. <laughs> and also to remember, brethren, verses 16 on to verse 18. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be held, may not be laid to their charge. Excuse me. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. It's getting really difficult out there, brethren. You go about and tell people, um, you know, the truth about all this nonsense. You explain to them and show them the truth of the Jesuits and their ties and what they're doing right now here in America, especially and all across the world. It's like a deer in the headlight, glazed over like a glazed jelly donut. Don't give up. Who knows if just that one person might hear. Don't give up. And if you're messing around, repent and get right with the Lord. And get into this book. It's coming, brethren. coming and if you're honest with yourself you do realize don't you that about 90 of percent of the people that you are aware of in your own personal life and that's being generous about 90 percent of the people that you know in your life and your little thing 90% of them are going to be left behind. And that's not your fault, by the way. The people are prepared. They covetous still. With impending doom, with the impending destruction of the American nation, with the inevitable collapse of all the world economies, the Jesuits here in America, through the Masons, and through other orders, instilling white-on-black racial riots, and the flu... The Corona gonna get you virus. This virus is probably the most deadliest thing that has ever come across man in all the history of the world. In all of recorded history, uh, the Corona, but there has been never a more deadlier thing than the Corona gonna get you. See what the Jesuits have done. If you happen to see this and you're lost, I'm going to link uh, both of the salvation videos that the Lord had me to do in this video. 
I have no idea what this is going to be called. I do have to go to work. It's uh, 7.13 my time, a.m., as I record this. But we saw in Jeremiah that those who of Israel, God's chosen people, with impending doom and disaster, faked it. But yet there was no change. There was no fear of the Lord. Some did fear, but like the rulers, no. And they love, and a lot of people love to hear these encouraging words, especially nowadays, of how God loves you. But you start saying, uh, repent of your self-righteousness. Repent. You need to be broken of yourself. Repent of yourself. Believe on what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you on the cross, that he is God, the Father, totally God. And go ahead and call on his name. You know why people don't like, you know why these people are against calling on the name of the Lord? Because it is the ultimate shoe of you humbling yourself. See, when you call upon the name of the Lord, you're asking him to save you. You are, by doing that, you're saying, I can't do it. You're stating to him, save me, Lord Jesus Christ. I can't. I'm no good. But see, if you just, just believe without any repentance, you know, of yourself, of your self-righteousness, and are against and preach against calling on the name of the Lord, got a little pride, don't you? For those of you who uh, preach against the truth by calling on the name of the Lord, we, the Church of the Living God, will get to see you guys how you guys do at the Great White Throne of Judgment. I gotta go. I don't know when my next video will be. I do have quite a big thing on the Jesuits that I need to get done. I've been procrastinating, I will be honest with you. Fight the good fight, brethren. It's coming. Love you. See you in the next video, whenever or whatever that may be.